Hey y'all, let's take a look at two things today, the distance formula and a little bit of chemistry. So this is yet another one of those things that looks complicated, but it's really just a ratio problem. And just it's, this, this kind of stuff, you just so you'll know. Um, maybe I'm giving away secrets here, but who cares? Uh, you, Saxon does a lot of chemistry stuff in here, not to, oh, prepare you for chemistry, but I mean, it is part, partly because of that, not just that only, but just to get you used to working with stuff like all these terms that you might not know what they are and they mean, and but don't worry about it. All you're doing is just uh, doing ratios and not being intimidated by words that you don't understand what they are exactly. And I don't know if you notice this too. And a lot of Saxon lessons, he'll use these, you know, the, the the ratio of x to y, but these are like vocabulary words that are like nine syllables each. And the point is not that you even know what those two words mean, but just the fact that you can look past that and do the problem correctly. It's actually really genius. So anyway, okay, well, let's go back and look at the distance between two points. Let's say it's negative four, three. Let's, we'll go one, two, three, four, and then one, two, three. There's one point and five, negative two. So one, two, three, four, five, and then negative two is right here. If you recall, um, the way we've done this before is we've just taken this and drawn a right triangle. And that's a perfectly wonderful line there. That just make, makes my head hurt. Anyway, okay. Well, you you know you, once you in other words the distance is the hypotenuse of the right triangle. So what you're going to do is you're going to go okay. This is one, two, three, four. This is five on this side of the triangle, and this is going to be four and then five more. That'll be nine. Okay. Then you'll go you know five squared plus nine squared. That's the you know hypotenuse squared. So twenty five plus what eighty one is the hypotenuse squared. So that'll be what, 106? So the square root of 106 is your hypotenuse. So the square root of 100 is 10, so this is a little more than 10, so reasonable answer, okay? There is a new way that you need to write down, and this is the actual distance formula. We're gonna do exactly the same thing, and you're gonna do this without drawing a right triangle or figuring hypotenuse or anything like that at all. And this is the formula. Go ahead and write this down, and you need to memorize this as soon as possible. All right? And uh, we're going to do exactly the same thing, so pause it if you need to. Okay, this might remind you of last time's uh, formula that we used to find the slope, and it's kind of like that a little bit. And the same thing is true about this. All you need to do is make sure that you are consistent. You might go, oh, which x do I use first? Doesn't matter as long as you're consistent. Okay, so let's go ahead and fill in some blanks here, right? So, and the key of this is to make sure, again, that you have those minus signs correctly. You might even want to just go ahead and do this first. So get yourself set up. Okay, so x sub 1 minus x sub 2. I don't know, there's the first x, let's just use that one. So negative 4 minus 5. All right, here we go. Okay, since we started with the negative 4, let's go ahead and start with the 3 here. And it's, again, a minus, okay? So we have a 3 here, minus a negative 2, which is the same thing as plus 2. Make sure you have that right, all right? So we have here, we have negative 4 minus 5 is minus 9 squared. Negative 9 times negative 9 is 81, all right? We have 3 plus 2 is 5. 5 squared is 25. Now, if you remember, you know, just a minute ago, we just did 81 plus 25, and there is your answer. No drawing right triangles at all to figure that out. Piece of cake. Okay. All right. Let's look at physics and chemistry. This, you need to write this down. And, I mean, if you want to even take a, I don't know, take a screenshot or something and do that, however you want to do it. Uh, this is a basic equation. Pressure, usually it's in atmospheres. That's the unit. V is volume, often in liters. N is the number of moles of gas. We won't get into what that means, but if you study chemistry, they'll talk about moles, all right? R is a constant, and that is the number of the constant, 0 0.0821. And T is the temperature in kelvins. Kelvins, okay? And Kelvin is named after a British scientist named Lord Kelvin, so anyway, okay? So pressure, volume, number of moles of gas, R is the constant and T is the temperature, okay? So let's do one. And this is, don't get, you know, intimidated. It's just a, it's just a ratio problem, really. Or just, you fill in the blanks and figure it out. So they'll say, use PV equals NRT to find the number of moles 
in an amount of gas when the temperature is 273 uh, degrees Kelvin, pressure is one, volume is eight, and boom, okay. So they're asking you first to find the number first, okay. So if you find the number, look back at this, the number, that's the N, okay. So what you're gonna do is, you're not gonna sit here and try to like, you know, put everything around it and then try to solve and do all this stuff. You're gonna solve for the N first, right? It's much, much easier to solve this if you get N by itself first. So if you wanna do that, it's pretty simple. I'm just gonna put the N on the left side. If you wanna get N by itself on this side, what are you gonna to have to do to get N by itself? What has to happen? You divide by RT, right? Okay, so this is gonna be divided by RT, and then of course those get canceled. And of course you do the same thing to this side. Okay, so N is equal to PV over RT. There we go, okay. Well, let's fill in the blanks here. All right, we got N equals P, and the pressure is one, mm, it's a toughie. Okay, V, the volume is eight. Okay, now we need to find R, and the temperature is 273, that's the temperature, okay. And I'm sorry, of course, the R is point zero eight two one and there we go okay i'm not going to even bother to solve that you can plug that into a calculator and there's your answer so not that big of a deal so go ahead and just write that formula down somewhere and use it and uh you know you can use it all you want uh, and eventually it'll just melt away you won't, you'll remember what it is and it won't be that big of a deal anymore and if you take a chemistry you know homeschool co-op class or something like that you know, you'll be one of the few that doesn't like fumble around and scared of ratios and all these kind of things too. So, all right. Okay. Let's try another one. Uh, same formula. We're going to find the volume of 0.832 mole of a gas at a pressure of three atmospheres, temperature 400 K. And of course, they are asking to find the volume. Okay. Anytime they ask you to find the volume, you need to go ahead and well, get volume by itself, okay? So in this basic formula, to get volume by itself, what are you gonna to need to do to both sides? Divide by P, okay? So there's your equation over P, okay? So let me just copy it down here again. The volume is equal to M, R, T, and pressure. Okay, so all we need to do is just pop it in there. So 0 0.832 of a mole, okay? So we have Point zero, oh, not point zero, that's my bad. 8.32, that is nasty, forget it. 0.832, all right, the R is our constant, which is 0 0.0821. All right, the temperature is 400, and the pressure is three atmospheres. And again, I'm not gonna bother to do all this arithmetic, you can do that, it's easy enough to do on a calculator, which I certainly recommend you use to save yourself a lot of time on these. And uh, this can be yet another one of those problems in your Saxon math problem set, which you can just zing out in like 30 seconds or whatever. So, okay. All right. Go ahead and use your distance formula to find the distance between those two uh, points and pause it and we'll come back in a second. Okay, here's the distance formula. You know, sum x minus the other x squared plus one of the y's minus the other y squared. Okay, all right. Well, you know what? Just for the heck of it, let's use the six. You could have used either one. I'll just start with a negative three. So negative three, then I'll go minus four. Okay, all right. This one, I'm gonna have to start with a one because I started with a negative three here. To match that, I'm gonna start with a one. So one minus negative two, which means one plus two, right? Okay, all right. Notice, if you had done the same thing, you would have got this. You would have got four minus negative three, in other words, four plus three, and you would have then got negative two minus one, like that. Now, if you notice, if you square this, it'll be seven squared, or 49. If you square this, it'll be negative seven squared, or 49. If you square this, you get three squared, or nine. If you square this, you get negative three squared, or also nine. So you have four, uh, what is it, seven squared, 49 here, and then three squared is nine. So this is just the square root of 49 plus nine, there you go. That's somewhere between, let's see, six squared, no, seven squared is 49, eight squared is 64, so somewhere between seven and eight. So there you go, all right.
pause it again and uh, give this a whirl. Okay, we're going to find the number of moles. All right, so we're going to go ahead and uh, isolate N like this. And N will be the same thing as P times V over RT. Okay, there we go. Okay, find the number of moles. Okay, the temperature is 159K, so that's on the bottom. The pressure is two atmospheres, that's on top. The volume is four liters, boom, and then your R is 0 0.0821. So, I don't know, let's try a calculator here. Uh, eight is, okay, what we want to divide by. Excuse me, that's on top. So divided by 0 0.0821, boom, good grief. And then time, no, divided by 159, right? So divided by 159. And it's 0.612 or something like that. So there we go. Okay, good enough. See you guys next time.